Hello chaps and chapettes and welcome to a Kickstarter that everybody should... Beep, 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 dot, dot, dot. Yes, imagine you wake up and the ground is moving and you look out your window and you see these large kaiju monsters uh, coming out of the ground. And luckily, you are the owner of a mech corporation and you're going to do something about it. Maybe good, maybe not so good. You've got a mech, you've got workers, you've got technicians, you're going to gather resources and you're going to fight these monsters by building buildings and maybe helping construct the Osaka castle in the new Osaka. This video was made possible with the help of Game Toppers. Upgrade your gaming experience with a Game Topper. So what is New Osaka? Well, let's just briefly go up, glaze over it. It's a two to five player worker placement, resource management, monster bashing game that is currently running on Kickstarter right now as I speak. In the game, players are going to play over nine rounds and each round is broken down into four phases and each phase, every player will be taking a turn until everybody passes and then it moves to the next phase. This is a very fluid game, a very long uh, technical game and I'm going to go through it as briefly as possible as I can explaining all the, the major points of the game. Now each player is going to choose a cooperation that they own and they are going to take a mech which belongs to that corporation and put it on their base on the main board. You're also going to collect your combat cards, you're going to get a progress board and a corporation resource board as well as some cubes, some workers and some money. So once you've chosen a starting player you're going to go through the four phases as indicated on your player board. And in each phase, every player is gonna take a turn and then pass to the next player and it go around the table to come back to the first player. And then they could decide to take another action on that phase if they wish or pass and be completely removed from that phase until everybody's passed. And then it'll move on to the next phase. Now the first phase is the resource generation phase. In this phase, you're gonna be using the workers that you have and you have seven of them to go and collect resources by placing them onto buildings. If you're the first player onto a building, you can collect that resource with just one worker and whatever the cost is as marked on your resource board. Also, you'll collect the number of resources that are on your resource board. At the beginning, you're only gonna start with one of each, but during the course of the game, you're going to evolve these tracks and you'll be able to collect more when you go to that building. Now, if you're the second player to go to that building, the value is gonna be two workers and the value marked on your player board plus the amount of resources that you get. You can see where this is going. At the beginning of the game, there are only going to be these basic buildings, which are public buildings, which anybody can go to. So everybody can go to these buildings, but later on, you're gonna be building your own buildings from a reserve placed to the side of the board. Some buildings will need upgrading, some buildings can be built directly and used directly as well. You'll place a cube on it to say that it's your building and only you can use that building. The only other building that only you can use is your base as well. If you use your base, you're gonna to need to spend two workers to get a very special resource, a machine of your own type. 
There's the advanced motor, the robotic machine, the fighter jet, and the engineering machine. These are considered resources as well as uh, other things that can be used. You can use the fighter jet in combat, for instance. All these machines can be used to be transferred into other resources with the power of a building or, trans or used to actually upgrade a building. The second phase is the mech activation phase. In this phase, players are going to be using any remaining workers that they have to allocate them to one of the four spaces. Now you can only use three maximum of these spaces and as you can see if you've taken a lot of damage from your mech you're not going to be able to use certain spaces. You're also going to be restricted on the number of workers that you can use on your game as well if you take damage to your mech. So for an instance Taking five damage will restrict you to only six workers. Taking seven damage will restrict you to only five workers. And it's a downhill slope from there. Placing a worker on this board will either give you some yen or it'll give you some movement for your mech. Now the yen is pretty obvious. It's money which is used to buy resources when you send the workers to a, a building. Uh, but moving your mech will probably provoke a combat because you're going to want to move it onto a space where there is a kaiju monster. In that case, there's a combat. Or you're going to want to move it onto a place where there is an opponent's building because you want that building because of the power that it has, which may trigger a combat because your opponent can decide to just jump there with their mech and defend it. Or you might just deliberately move into a space where there's another mech and just want to fight it there. I'll talk about combat in a minute. Let's move on to the third phase. The third phase is the building phase. This is where you can spend those resources that you've gathered and actually build one of the buildings which are displayed on the side of the board. You can put them in practically any space which is empty of kaiju monsters, especially if you've just taken out a kaiju monster in a certain space, you can build a building there, which again blocks it from spawning there, which is a good thing. But instead of building maybe a building, you might want to just discard a few buildings. You can spend a couple of yen to remove a few tiles to have some new tiles placed out. So you have a bit of option. And there's a lot of tiles in this game for the different buildings. But instead of building your own building, you could actually contribute towards helping reconstruct the Osaka castle. You spend the resources, you get some victory points. And then finally, there's the reset phase, which is a simple case of you bring your mech back home, you bring your workers back home, and any kaiju monsters that were killed and there was no building placed on them, they get to respawn with new tokens. So if you move your mech and it lands on a kaiju space or another player's building or their mech space, you may cause a conflict. Well, you're definitely going to cause a conflict if it's another mech or a kaiju and it's a simple case of rolling a d12 each player has their own d12 and whoever has the most wins the combat but there's more to it than that you have a reserve of 10 cards from your combat deck which you will draw at the start of the game now these cards are very rare and hard to get back hold of but you can choose one of these cards to add to your attack dice and you do that before you roll your dice you also have the uh, fighter jets that you can build and you can also build some missiles as a resource which will give you bonus three points and one point to add again to your attack score now obviously if you're going head to head with another mech it is a case of playing a card adding any extras and then rolling your dice um, but if you're going against a uh, kaiju each kaiju has their own different attack dice they might be a d10 it might be a d6 where another player will roll that and you will see if you get higher than that to defeat it. If you defeat it, you get the benefits marked below. It might be some yen or it might be a chance to upgrade uh, a resource. So whenever you go to that factory to collect that resource, you don't just get one for that cost. You get two for that cost because your team are now experts at making plastic, for example. And the game continues on until after nine rounds. Uh, you see who's got the highest score and you get points from a majority of ways. There's the common goals where whoever has taken out X amount of certain type of kaiju will get bonus points or maybe uh, built X amount of buildings. 
there are the buildings themselves. You build them, you get points. You can also get points from killing the kaiju. And there are a little few other ways of getting points as well in the game. So let's talk about my first impressions of the game. Now we played it once, three players, and we took to it like ducks to water. It's very simple to, well, the, the rules are very simple. They're very familiar. They seem like other games that we've already played mashed together. In fact, looking at the game and thinking about the game, you might say, this looks like a scythe copy. And you could be right. There is the resources, there's the big mechs, which are like the big bosses for fighting. Um, and there's the hexagonal board. But this game is a lot more frugal, a lot more tougher, um, and there's a lot more combat involved in this. You could play friendly together and, you know, stay in your own little corners and do your own little things, but the game doesn't give you that. Even over nine rounds, this game uh, will pressure you into doing things which you wouldn't normally do in a game. This is a real kind of brain burning type of game as well. You need to have played it a couple of times beforehand to, to know what kind of tiles there are and what kind of powers there are because there are the common resources that you can build uh, like the plastic and the metal but then there are some really hard ones to get hold of um, which are only used for the castle reconstruction or are used to uh, join two buildings together which will give you some bonus points as well. And they are really hard to get hold of. And over the course of the game, as I said, it's very frugal to get the resources to, do the, to build the buildings. And even over nine rounds, it felt like a very slow burn as your company was building up and building up and taking out monsters. So you can't really waste time and you can't really waste resources from round to round. You have to be, you have to have a mindset of what you're going for. Um, even though this game is a point salad, there are points here, 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 here. You can get points everywhere. You still have to have like a kind of uh, a mentality of like, I'm going on this path, right? I need that building, I need that building. But this game also has this, you can screw the other players quite easily by looking at what resources they got. You can discard buildings which you think they're gonna build by looking at what weapons they have and how many cards they have. You might think that they're an easy target and try and take them out. As all this information is open, you can kind of just screw over other people quite easily. You can see that maybe that player is going for that type of common bonus. Uh, they're going for that type of kaiju. So I know what, I'm gonna go for that kaiju. Talking about the kaiju, they don't really play much of a role in the game apart from sitting ducks. It's a shooting gallery of cards down the side um, with resources maybe that you want to, to collect more easily um, and points that you might want to collect more easily. Um, so they, they, just, they just pop up and they're there for you to take down whenever you want. They don't feel like a threat. So it kind of takes away from the theme of the this manga world of mechs against monsters, but it is what it is. It's a way of getting resources and it's another way of getting money. As I said, all of this stuff is very, very hard to get hold of. The look of the game is fantastic. Uh, the iconography is very simple to follow. As I said, the game is easy to play. It's very fluid. We, you didn't have time to play with your mobile phone because it was like your turn, their turn, their turn, their turn. And as the game did go on, it did grind a little bit because you had to think a bit more. Um, but you'd have to take a good whole afternoon probably to enjoy this game, especially if you're going to play with five players. Um, this is a very grindy, crunchy game. Um, the only criticism I have, we had, was we couldn't differentiate the types of monsters from the artwork to their icon. There would be nice if there was the icon maybe on the front art of the, the cards, which would have helped. But apart from that, the components are nice, the dice felt nice of course, the card art is fantastic, there's a lot of different attacks in the, in the, the cards, there's a lot of different buildings in the buildings, and there's a, a, well there's just four types of kaiju monsters, but they're all excellently drawn, uh, the mechs are nice, um, it looks like this is going to be a good Kickstarter. So if you're into big, big, really kind of really thinky games where you are going to be treading on everyone else's toes, this is probably a Kickstarter for you. 
and that is New Osaka. So there you have it. Thank you very much for spending this time watching me yabba yabba yabba. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you know someone that might appreciate this game and might be interested in backing it, share this video with them. And if you want to check out everything else that I've been up to in the board gaming world, including all the board game soundtracks that I've been working on and the Dungeons and Dragons soundtracks, uh, the other board game reviews, the Birkin Badger podcast that I do, uh, you can go to boardgameseverybodyshould.com and check it all out there. So I'll say thank you again for watching. Uh, I'll say ciao for now. And please, please, please remember to play nice with each other. Even if the game tells you not to. <laughs> Just sit in.